Hello film fans and welcome to this episode of The Shilokian. Now the results for the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition came out earlier this month and as they're now on show at the Natural History Museum I thought it might be quite fun to have a little look at some of them and see which ones were my favourites. Now I've got notes for this because it is quite hard to remember all the details even for five um, images so I do apologise so when I look down that's what I'm doing. But anyway I thought I'd start off with the actual winner um, Karine Eigner I've probably butchered that name, I do apologise. Anyway, her picture, the big buzz, was absolutely brilliant. It shows basically um, a group of cactus bees mating. And there's like a little cuddly, furry beach ball of these bees at the centre of which is one of the females. And the males are sort of piling on top of her in a kind of race to mate. Now, I really like this picture. One, because obviously it's um, something you don't really see very often. I think it's probably fairly rare for um, a picture of an insect to actually win one of these competitions. Um, but also it's filmed brilliantly, or rather shot brilliantly, from a really low angle with a kind of macro um, lens. So you're getting really close, you've got lots of nice detail. And obviously because it was shot um, in, I think it was in um, America, but obviously because it's shot in a nice hot place, it's got, um, obviously got this really nice warm light behind it, which I really enjoyed. I thought it really shows up all the sort of the detail on the bees. Um, and it also has a great name, the Big Buzz, which I did like. Um, obviously, you shouldn't award um, prizes on account of names, but you might be unsurprised to notice, given my general, um, shall we say, childish sense of humour, that a lot of these do have quite good names, which may or may not have affected my um, liking for the picture in general. Anyway. The next one, and this I think was actually my overall favourite, um, was by um, Fernando Constantino Martinez Belmar, and this one's called The Bat Snatcher. Now, this is brilliant. It's got a Yucatan rat snake catching a bat in midair. Now, I think I've seen this on a documentary somewhere, um, but basically there's these caves in Mexico where they've obviously got massive colonies of bats in them, as um, you're probably unsurprised to hear. But obviously they have these rat snakes which um, lurk around the edges. Now obviously bats are brilliant um, flyers and navigators in the dark, they've got echolocation, so you might think it'd be really hard for a snake to catch one. And of course you'd be right. Um, but obviously the snakes are able, um, through their sort of heightened senses, to be able to feel the vibrations of the bats in the air. So you get this really cool kind of like, I don't know, evolutionary arms race, but you've got the bats like a location against the um, the uh, vibrational senses of the snakes. Now, normally the bats win. I mean, obviously, if as long as the bats stay kind of in the middle of the sort of the cave entrance rather than outside the edge, around the edge, then they're all right. But obviously there's so many bats that obviously some of them are gonna be at the edge of the kind of the group as they fly out. And that's where the snakes get their chance. Now, the reason this picture is so amazing is quite frankly, the timing that uh, Fernando must have had to <laughs> have to get this. And it looks brilliant. It's so wonderfully shot. The snake is like head on to the camera. And then you see the, the both wings of the bat protrude from either side of the mouth of the snake. You can even see its little face, you know, it, and it, what is presumably, you know, an expression of shock is the snake is biting down on it. Now, apparently, rat snakes actually, obviously they're not venomous, um, but they actually consume their prey whole, like most snakes, but that's kind of the way they kill it. I mean, obviously they've got teeth, but I don't, I think, and I might be right, wrong in this, but I think they're, um, they've basically got teeth at the back of their um, mouth. So basically they kind of bite into it as they're already swallowing it, which is quite a gruesome thing to do, but it clearly works very well. And it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant photograph. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed that one. And you might be unsurprised after that kind of glowing um, praise of his first picture that Fernando is actually the subject of the third one I picked out. Um, this one's called Meeting Without Eating. Um, the first two I should stress, obviously Eigner's one overall, um, and um, Fernando's first picture actually, um, I think it won one of the categories. Um, this one actually was just highly commended, but I like this one all the same. Basically it's shot with a camera trap at a, um, a, nat a national park in the Amazon, and it's got a jaguar facing off against a pig um, between, <laughs> through a fence obviously, hence the title meeting without eating. Apparently the jaguar had already paid several prior visits to this particular um, farm. Apparently it was supposed to be set, it was set up a bit like a, a, a Mayan um, homestead, if you like, um, to give some like visitors an idea of what they might have looked like. Um, I'm guessing that Mayans also probably had problems with jaguars eating their livestock. Um, um, but they had actually beefed the fence up for the park rangers in order to stop the, um, the pigs from actually getting further depredated on. Um, even so though, 
It's a really, really cool image with the kind of the um, the jaguar with its mouth open facing the pig, and the pig doesn't actually seem that frightened. I mean, pigs are supposed to be intelligent, so maybe it's realised that <laughs> the fencing's been beefed up, and as a result, the jaguar can't catch it. Or maybe it's just because um, <laughs> that's just the way it happened to be shot, and the next image would show you <laughs> the the pig turning around and legging it. But either way, it's an absolutely fantastic shot. The Jaguar really looks like it's been caught red-handed, um, and it's a really kind of in-the-moment um, photograph with the Jaguar with its mouth open, really staring down its quarry. Then the fourth image I picked up, and um, this is Adam Rice, and it's called Surprise Prey. Now this shows a black bear in the process of um, killing a young Wapiti. Um, Wapiti is another name for elk. Um, the name Elk must be one of the most complicated <laughs> names ever, um, because in Scandinavia they call Moose Elk, and obviously in America they call Wapiti Elk. So I mean, it depends where you are as to what this is, but this is a uh, uh, Wapiti, um, because it was obviously shot in America, um, and this is a brilliant image. Um, Apparently it was shot entirely by accident, it wasn't planned, as a lot of these um, great pictures are. Um, but essentially what happened was the um, the bear pounced on something, and then Rice took the photograph as it sort of turned around, and he saw that it had a baby deer in its mouth. And obviously um, adult Wapiti, the mothers, hide their young in the grass, and the bears realised this obviously, and even though black bears tend to be fairly um, um, conservative in their diet, they're obviously omnivorous like all bears, but they tend to focus more on, say, um, vegetable matter and like some rodents or easier stuff to catch basically um in this case obviously the bear stumbled across this baby deer and decided it was going to have a you know have a munch on it um now i really like this um shot i mean i say like it sounds a bit weird to say i enjoy seeing a baby deer in the process of being killed um but it's a fantastic shot in the sense that it really catches the sort of the moment just before the kill it's kind of it is gruesome but it's kind of almost it's quite somber and it's a wonderful shot in the sense that the the, the bear is kind of um, in the process of dragging the deer up a tree and you can really see the kind of expression on both their faces it's kind of quite an urgent image um to use a kind of weird um descriptive word but it, it feels very kind of um real if that makes sense it's really caught in the moment um which i think is one of the reasons why i liked it and then finally, the fifth picture I picked out was by Tony Wu, and it's called Shooting Star. Now, this is a brilliant image, and one I really, really enjoyed. It's basically a giant sea star, which I confess I hadn't even ever heard of. And and it's spawning in this kind of uh, quite strong current. So, obviously, all the, um, the eggs are kind of swimming around it in all these kind of intricate, pretty patterns. But what looks really cool is it looks like an electrical current. Um, Hence, I assume the name Shooting Star. Um, one of the judges actually said they thought it looked a bit like something from a science fiction film, and it kind of does. It's amazing. When I first saw it, I thought, wow, that looks like it's been zapped by an electrical pulse. Um, and it just, yeah, just it's such a wonderfully incongruous image, and it actually really, um, the contrast in the picture is so beautiful. The kind of the sort of the kind of dark red of the sea star really, really contrasts nicely with the kind of the, the bluish light that the kind of the, um, the, um, fry give off as it leaves it's absolutely amazing so yeah those were my top five picks but obviously there are loads of others if you go to the natural history museum or even go to their website and um, you can see all of them and obviously winners from previous years as well this one um this year i mean there was really really good crop of stuff and they have lots of really widely varying interesting categories so i definitely recommend checking them out but yeah that was the shilokin thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye